It's way past time I dispense some indiscriminate justice! G'day ladies and gentlemen, Duckville here. We're going to be doing another little mini guide to this particular 4v4 map. Now, little confession of course, um, I am actually in love with uh, team games. I know a lot of you sort of look at them and say, ooh, it's a team game. All you do is get rushed. You see uh, mono battles, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, it is true. And it, and it does happen, of course. I actually play a lot of just um, random games with... Um, with just of course the random people on ladder and you can actually have some very cool games and this is actually one of them and I thought what better way to actually continue the uh, little uh, team game mini guide to some of the maps of course than uh, this particular match this is a great one but just uh, before we go on too much about how awesome the game is which I think I've already done enough this uh, map is Outpost this is the four v one of the 4v4 maps which is started in the original of course uh, well from, from uh, beta essentially um, this is probably one of the, I'm sort of a little bit um, still skeptical about this map, but we'll go over a few features, we'll talk about some of the good parts of this map, we'll talk about some of the bad parts, and some of the strategies you can use to actually take advantage of the outlay of this map. But before we get into that, we'll go over the players. Of course, Team 1 is going to be a Red Zerg over here, known as Branford. And his little teammate here in this side of the map will be the blue Terran known as Silly Sky. Over here we do have a, bl a purple uh, Protoss known as Shrapnel. And then of course myself over here. So we'll see what happens here. We do have uh, some scouting going on. Just a little bit of a scouting war here. We do have probes actually trying to take on an SCV. Shrapnel and, uh, Shrapnel and I actually having a go at uh, this SCV. But on this side of the map we do have a pink Terran known as Ruffle Stomp. We have a uh, green Terran known as Panil Panilampa. I don't know. Um, another Terran known as Alpha Whiskey, and finally a or an orange Protoss as uh, known as Ant. Oh, so we've got uh, the 4v4 rolling here now. Obviously one of the big things that, that everyone notices straight up is that these bases are actually all put together. Um, sorry, the two of the bases are put together. As you can see here, you get your teammate, one of you, uh, is actually linked up with another one. And as you can see, there is just one ramp. It is a slightly bigger ramp, so you do have to be mindful of that when you're setting up a wall, if you set up a wall, that it is actually a uh, slightly bigger ramp. So a few more buildings will actually be needed to block it off if you're Terran or Protoss. And of course, if you Zerg, you know, put some hatcheries down. That's a cool way to do it, is to block off like that. And as you can see here, just another version of the wall. is uh, It's slightly more open. Um, I think that was actually my fault because I didn't wall it off properly. But um, this is another way to do it. And of course, Shrapnel's got a cannon, so we're all good. Now, over here on this side, we'll just have a quick look at what these guys have got. A little bit of a different setup. This is obviously a little bit tighter and, of course, a little bit thicker because there are the two racks and the supply depots on the side. And, of course, the good thing about this is if your opponent is a Zerg, such as in this situation over here for Branford and um, Silly Sky, is that you can actually help out your teammate by putting up the wall here and then they don't have to worry. Sometimes what you do see is that a Terran or sometimes a Protoss, not as often, will actually wall off the whole thing themselves. And then that, that actually leaves you to um, spend a little bit more of the space here um, on your own buildings. So, this is actually um, a kind of a deficit to this particular map as well when I'm talking about spacings, and I'll show you why. This, um, this little area here, if a probe comes through, you can actually get up to this spot here, and also this spot here, and some cheese can commence, which does happen. Uh, this is probably one of the maps which doesn't get cheese as often as uh, some of the other 4v4 maps but it does tend to happen, so of course be aware of it. Now, check this out, this is actually a little bit, um, it's a little bit more of a space there to keep an eye on, but it, um, it is uh, still the same sort of thing, and of course over on this side, it's generally this map is um, mirrored decently. But we'll see what happens, of course I do have, um, one of the reasons why I was talking about how awesome this, uh, this matchup was, is because it was actually a very tactical game, not often do you actually get in these games where you actually have uh, some very tactical um, positioning, 
um, strategic sort of uh, unit movement, that sort of thing, which is one thing we did have in this particular match. Now we do see that um, myself and Branford have come across to actually have a look at what is going on on this side of the map, and of course we do see there's a lot of Marines here which will be able to deal with those Zerglings, but it will need to be uh, counteracted by the fact that there is a Stalker there, so the Stalker will be able to help out of course as well. Now. Speaking of um, strategic management was um, one of the things which these guys um, these guys did really well and of course um, on our side we had to counteract by doing the same thing ourselves but a lot of stalkers, we'll get into that in a second, a lot of stalkers coming up here now. This is one thing about this map is that there are t uh, two golds on this map. You've got one, uh, one over here and one on the opposite side here. So this is um, one thing you really need to keep in mind is that these gold expansions are very, they're not exactly far away. One thing to, keep, to uh, bear in mind though is that they are actually visible by the Zelnaga Watchtower. So if this base gets taken, you can actually see it with this Zelnaga Watchtower. And if the, obviously the opposing side, if that one gets taken, you can see that with the other Zelnaga Watchtower, which we'll get to in just a second. After this little battle here, some stalkers coming up. Nice timing on the Zerg units there. Doing it brilliantly is Branford, who actually did a great job just actually building just enough units to defend that one and is now building some more banelings, of course, over here and will try and get some more pressure in. Now, this is one thing which is a very powerful part of this map and is a very big feature of a lot of the team maps is that the, because they're a, a, a sort of a lower amount of um, paths to your opponent. Terrans with siege tanks, if you get siege tanks out quickly they can be quite powerful and as you can see here marines are coming across and they will try and do a lot of damage here but there are siege tanks across on this side for Ruffle Stomp and uh, Ant of course is going to be uh, trying to help out there. Attempts to come across and I've actually got some Templar out earlier which was a little bit of a different thing I've been trying in 4v4 just to get a lot of uh, Templar out a little bit early. You can either go for uh, Storm or you can go for some Archons which really help out. Now as you can see here, the holding this Zelnaga Watchtower is a key part, of course. You've got to make sure that you have the vision there, and of course these uh, Templar do have Storm, so once there are a few of these Marines grouped up, Storm is going to go down and uh, do a bit of damage there. It does go down, rolls through some of these Marines, and takes off a lot of health of these, but a counter-attack is going on from Branford. He's coming through the side now. We'll just show you in a second how this uh, attack actually took place, and it, we'll see if these Banelings actually get inside. Keep in mind, I didn't actually... Uh, actually see what happened with these attacks. Brilliant little probe micro there from Ant to actually stop the Banelings from getting inside. If you can actually pull, pull them off these uh, probes, you may be able to get some good damage done. And it looks as if the Banelings are just going to have a little bit of a uh, merry-go-round here with the probes, and it looks as if the probes are getting a little bit caught out here. They may actually take down the Banelings. It's been a little a little bit of a ride here for, for these probes, they're uh, running around and could be exploding right about now. There you go, you do see a lot of those probes going down. If we have a quick look at the Harvester tab, we do have Ant actually down to 13 probes now compared to what uh, some of the other players have, which is sort of in the range of about 25 to sort of 30 range, of course. Now, just back to this um, battle before we get to a couple of things I was going to mention. Just uh, these tanks still sitting out here for Alpha Whiskey and Ruffle Stomp with the Zerglings to finally come along and they will be able to take out those tanks and that'll be the end of that siege there. Now, um, the first thing I was talking about was the Zelnaga Towers, of course. Um, now, this tower can actually see over here to this side, so you can actually see any expansion that goes down there, of, of course, especially if it's a Zerg, of course, because the, the creep comes along and the creep is uh, a little bit of a uh, signature that you are expanding somewhere. now. Some scans going off, you can't see too much of what is over this side and we'll see if uh, the team number two will call the team down in the bottom left, team number two, and my team will call team number one. Uh, can't actually see too much of what may be coming in from the side here. So we'll see what happens. The Colossus is for some reason just hanging out here at the front lines, taking shots at these Marines. It will be able to rip through, through those and finally it does, but Shrapnel decides to pull back. now. As I was saying before, with the, uh, the few paths that are actually featured on some of these team maps, siege tanks are really great, and sometimes what I've actually been seeing lately is uh, a pylon and some cannons. Just do it, just put like three or four cannons down, you can line one of these pathways and actually stop any units from coming through, but the difficulty of that on this map is actually that there, are a, there is an alternate path around the side here which you can go through, which we did see Branford use before when he went for that counter-attack across here. He went all the way through here, past the siege tanks which was sitting over here 
and then went into the base there. Now, as we do see, of course, the other feature of this, uh, this particular map is that there are six expansions just hanging off in the corners of the map. So we've got one here, you've got one that is uh, a little bit more contested because it's right in the middle, and then another one over on this side as well, which we can see that Ruffle Stomp has taken and has mulled up quite nicely, so he's going to get that rolling soon. And over on the other side, you have the mirrored version as well, as we can see, and Branford has decided to take that as well. So, uh, just sort of back to the action, just for a little bit here, and just running through you, there are some Zealots just caught out in the middle of nowhere, and they may be picked off, but it looks as if they have backed off sufficiently to get away from those units. Just some a couple of errors here from these guys just uh, pushing across this side and they have actually uh, taken out some of the tanks but there's not really too much else that they can take out for the moment. Now this is one thing that um, is really big on this map is pushing across with the tanks and if he can get those pushing up he may be able to do some damage here. Now on this side we've got some ghosts of course, the bane of, uh, of High Templar of course once those uh, EMPs goes off if they can actually uh, go go off. I mean, if they can get inside and actually get, remove the energy of some of the Templar, that's a uh, good game for that particular uh, batch of units. But we do see an EMP go off here. It looks as if these Colossi are going to stay on the high ground, but those Templar are grouped up, so this could be troublesome for the Templar, and there it is. Terrible positioning by me. Some more EMPs going off here, but there are certainly more than enough units to actually remove this particular base, and the attack is now commencing on this side. Now, this is the one, uh, the one problem with expanding out to the sides here which can be a little bit difficult is that you can actually have a lot of uh, a lot harder time with your teammates actually coming in to support you as we can see Alpha Whiskey and uh, and Ant of course who has been decimated in the economy stakes are all the way over here and they have to come all the way over to this side to actually get into the battle but it looks as if um, they will be able to come across and actually cut down this attack which myself and Shrapnel were going for but um, the Templar is still gaining some of their energy there and may be able to put um, some more hurt down on the stalkers and whatnot that are here. The blink going off, these Templar are now caught out a little bit here and of course what you want to see in this sort of position where if you are a Terran in this spot here and you've sieged up the middle, take the gold base. If you don't have it already, just take it. Even if you think it, it might be a little bit risky and you're just a bit worried about actually getting it, just take it anyway just so you can get it up. If you can slam down some mules on top of these gold um, you can actually, of course, do a great boost to your economy there, and we do see the Branford doing still a, a stellar job with his uh, with his Zerglings, and he's doing a good job of that. And Anuka is going off now from uh, Ruffle Stump. He's going to be able to put that down. I believe that was spotted just in time, and it looks as if he, he will be able to put that nuke down, but it doesn't do too much damage. The probes got away just in time, and the probes now go back to town, and they will be able to get back to work. So, nice little nuke there from Ruffle Stomp. He'll probably attempt it again, because once people start getting nukes, they tend to uh, do it all over again. And as we can see here, some Archons are starting to morph in. Probably my uh, signature unit just at the moment is uh, getting the Archons, because I'm trying to make them work, but um, it's quite hard given how terrible and slow they are. But another attack going off here. Some uh, fungal growth from our Zerg player would be fantastic right about now. But of course, this is a team game, so you do have to be aware of what is going on on the map all over the place. And uh, pretty much, Branford has been doing a good job of actually uh, running around the map and um, removing a lot of the random bases and units that are getting up. And as you can see here, a nuke went down just before over here on top of the Archons, of course, and removed all of their uh, shields, but didn't actually do any damage to their health, of course because they have a great deal of shields. Now, Charge and the uh, Archons coming through to push into this particular attack here, saving the front door, and as we can see on the rest of the map, we've got our Terran player and our Zerg actually just running around. Now, one thing I will point out about what um, Branford is up to is just building a lot of lings and running around the map and controlling the map. That's one big thing, which is, uh, re which is something you really need to do as a Zerg player in team games, is try and just use your links to control the map because if you can stop your opponents from expanding, if you can stop their units from getting into too great a number, you can actually uh, be a great service to your team because you'll be able to stop the uh, oops, stop the opponent from getting too far ahead and your teammates can tech up of course. Now, Thors have come along from Alpha Whiskey which are a really big problem to deal with and, but some Marines will be coming inside from um, He's this silly sky, and he'll be able to um, take care of all of these doors along with some speed doors as well. 
Now, if we have a look at the other end of the map, we do have Branford on this base, still struggling to saturate this one just at the moment, but Ant is now going for his own expansion here. A drone has spotted this, and we will be able to see that that is going up, and of course we'll probably have to deal with that at some point, but... Finally, we do have an expansion going up from Silly Sky. He's a little bit out of position. That should probably go around about, where is it? Around about there. Don't know why that's in that position, but um, oh well, we'll see what happens. And it looks as if uh, Pel Penilenpa is going to do his own expansion there. You'll probably see that one switch into a planetary now. This is a point of the game which um, which fours and obviously threes sometimes rarely get to. Is this sort of uh, 20 minute stage when you actually have um, the, a lot of contention on the middle bases. So these gold bases in the middle and of course um, these two particular bases here as you can see are uh, very hotly contested and as we can see I'm probably going to expand to this one in just a second and this is uh, this is a stage where you have to you have to sort of start getting a little bit more efficient with your units if you can. Um, make sure you start supporting your teammates more than you normally would because of course if, um, if both you and your teammates start losing units you'll actually uh, start getting into a bit of a downward spiral because you won't be able to defend any expansions to try and take and you won't be able to attack at all of course if you have no units but a lot of colossi, it's War of the Worlds down here uh, ripping through this Terran army and they will be able to take out the Thors we'll probably see them march through and take out these tanks in just a second but first they've got to get rid of these marines and they do indeed do that and then finally the, uh, the, the Colossus will get rid of all of this here. Now we do see that Silly Sky has taken advantage of this high ground here. I haven't actually mentioned the high ground too much. Now, two reasons. This is actually, um, this high ground, number one, is it's um, of course very easy to spot. Some, something which people need to consider a little bit more in team games is that um, there's obviously a lot higher chance that you'll be against a Zerg and of course that means that Overlords will be able to get into these sorts of spots and spot anything that's up there but if you can secure something, if you can put a tank down, if you can put um, you know some cannons down that'd be fantastic and um, just hold it for at least as long as you can to make sure that um, you can hold that sort of position but as you can see Ultra Ultralis has actually come out for Branford, this is the uh, sort of the stage at which Zerg usually gets to the fun part of the game. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, as a Zerg, if you're playing fours or threes, what you want to do is try and control the map as much as you can with speedlings, running them around and taking out all sorts of stuff. And um, then what you want to do, once, once you've done that, and your teammates, such as, as we can see here, Shrapnel, or myself, or uh, Silly Sky, have actually secured the map as, uh, as best for the team as possible and have teched up a bit, that's when you can switch in the Ultralis and actually just start marching inside your opponent's bases and just start ripping them apart. And as we can see, with the Ultralis, they certainly do that to a great, uh, a great advantage to your team. So this is uh, the problem for team number two, of course, as we can see, there are some tanks actually getting vision on this uh, this base here for Ant, and that has now been removed. Ant is in a terrible position. If we actually have a look at the economy stakes, we actually have um, Ruffle Stomp has actually essentially been annihilated. He's only got a few SCVs left, and they are not mining at all. And now some uh, the Zealot Archon High Templar army has now come inside, removing some of those medevacs there, taking out them out with the feedback on the energy of the medevacs and of course if there's over 150 energy inside a medevac it'll actually get destroyed very cool to see feedback and um, it is something which people need to use a little bit more personally I think but um, this is sort of obviously getting to the end stage of this game because team number one is in a great position here controlling a lot more of the map and as I mentioned I've sort of mentioned multiple times fours and threes, threes and fours is more about controlling the map than actually going in and killing your opponent. If you can control the expansion, as you can see here, this was taken out, and the gold was held here, and of course this particular side of the map has also been um, taken over as well. If you can control the expansions, it's more about just actually holding the land than actually taking the expansions at some point. Um, but if you can do that, then you can be in a fantastic position. So this particular map, of course, um, strategies, so I've mentioned um, things such as uh, pushing some tanks into the middle here, holding this middle ground. If you can chuck a tank up here, that's good. Not required, though. And, of course, um, some cannons in the middle are always good as well. Um, but uh, just also be careful of things such as cheese over here. You got cheese over to the side as well in all these uh, little nooks and crannies of the bases because they are very huge areas to actually deal with. So do keep that in mind if you are playing on this map. 
and uh, hopefully this has been a little bit of fun, a little bit of learning, and uh, we'll do some more later. Obviously, I'll try and get the rest of the 4v4 maps done and maybe go into the 3v3 maps, and then we can see what happens from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you want to see some other particular things like these little map analysis sorts of things, and I'll uh, do what I can, and we'll get them all going. And I hope to see you guys next time. Cheers.